Good morning, good day, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to this webinar from Navtor, which is the 11th in our series of webinars. Today, we are happy to present the Digital Logbooks, which is a new product in cooperation with Ingenium Marine. So the agenda for today, uh, first we will have a welcome message from Börge Hetland. Then we will have an uh, introduction to Digital Logbooks, where Timo Essers, uh, product manager at Navtor, will ask what the importance of going digital with Logbooks is. And then finally, we'll have a live presentation, demonstration of the Digital Logbooks with uh, Amitabh Sankranti, who's the CEO and founder of Ingenium Marine. So, uh, first, some housekeeping. Uh, first of all, my name is Björn Åkre. I will be filling in for Richard Northover this morning. And then uh, this webinar is hosted on the platform called 23. On your right hand side, you can see this uh, chat window that's already uh, working and everyone's saying hi, good morning and good day. And you also have a questions tab at the top right uh, where you can post questions as we go along and feel free to ask questions during the presentation because we will have a questions and answer session in the end. We will bring up the questions full screen where Amitabh and Timo will go through them and answer them directly. So everyone can see them at the same time. Also, we have some handouts. We have a product information leaflet in PDF format. And we also have a link list of all the previous webinars that uh, we have had with Navto. Also, you can find the previous webinars on the website that you can see if there's any other teams that uh, interest you. So without any further ado, uh, I can uh, hand it over to Börge Hetland, who will give us a welcome message. Over to you, Börge. As today. As Bjorn said, this is the 11th webinar we have had. And, uh, you know, we started these webinars due to COVID. Uh, we were anticipating that COVID shouldn't last so long, but still it's around. So we will continue these webinars for still some time. Hopefully one day we will be soon be able to travel around and meet you all uh, in your office. I would also like to say thank you to all of you who are using Navto on board today. And, uh, you know, since we started in 2011, we have been introducing a lot of new products and services. And we have always taken the pride in listening to the demands of you, let's say what uh, features and uh, products you would like us to develop, and we have developed accordingly. And today, uh, as Bjorn said, we are extremely happy to introduce you to our new partner, Ingenium Marine. There has been an increasing demand for electronic logbooks over the last few years, and it has been increasing rapidly the last few months. So we have been discussing if we should develop this ourselves or if we should go in partnership with someone. And when we found Ingenium Marine, we saw that I think it's easier or better to just partner up with them because they have already come a far way. And the feedback from the, product, from the customers they already have is is extremely good. They have many customers who have been using logbooks for quite some time, and the, the feedback is that it's easy to get started, it's easy to uh, install it, and the software is also intuitive and, um, and user-friendly. And they have never ever lost uh, a customer. And of course, the big question is, why should you go digital with logbooks? And of course, this webinar is all about explaining the benefits of digital logbooks and also yeah, a demonstration by Amitab how to use it. I think maybe one of the biggest benefits is the transparency it provides. With this uh, logbooks uh, by Navtor or powered by Ingenium, you can now sit in the office and have a real-time window into the logs. So you can sit in the office and actually have a feeling on what is going on on, on board. It also comes with a nice dashboard so you can see some KPIs uh, on what they've been entered, so you can use this data for some uh, analyzing. So we have a big belief in this product, and we are uh, already have some customers uh, doing trial. And if you have after the webinar, if you have any questions, you would like to know uh, more uh, more information, please reach out to any of our 
area sales manager or your contact person at NAFTO. So by this, thanks again for joining and uh, over to Timo. Hi, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, and uh, thank you for, uh, for handing over with Belga. Uh, indeed, I want to keep it short quickly and actually want to jump straight away to the, uh, to the demonstration. I think that is what, what all of us here in the audience are looking for to see how the product feels and looks like. But in general, I want to, you know, uh, highlight a little bit of the why, why, because it's still a relatively new product, uh, or not a new product. The product is already on the market for a couple of years, but, uh, many, many of you uh, already have been considering or have their reasons why they're participating in this webinar, looking into uh, digitalizing their log keeping pro procedures on board. So, so I wanted to highlight what, 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 the, what are the benefits. So hereby share my screen and um, uh, guide you through what, uh, <laughs> what the benefits are for you. <clears throat> so as you see, um, the, uh, how you can benefit from going digital um first of all you're enhancing situational awareness yeah by by having the logs in a digital form you will be able to monitor log entries on board but you also will get be prompted and get smart alerts and and notifications whenever you enter uh, a, a entry which is not correct uh, recording the technicalities on your vessel in addition to that you create transparency one of the highlights things can be can be viewed live uh, and, and real time in the office. Also, the the, uh, the the hierarchy of signing is also everything has to be reviewed and, and verified and validated by any superior, although that's rather flexible. Now we have the smart consumption of data. All of you now have like probably stacks of paper logbooks only consuming space in a vessel, but why not consume the data from the logbooks in a smart way and use them for analysis and, and also for remote audits. Uh, I mean, basically, there is no smart solution or no smart way in, 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 in conventional and, and traditional log keeping. It's only consuming space. You also have shipping costs and, and, and logistics involved. So why not go digital and everything is, 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 uh, is, is available on demand? So that's basically what I wanted to highlight. So then, of course, we also have like numerous, <laughs> numerous scenarios here that lot, lots of you can relate to. So we, uh, where the maritime industry is mainly focusing on digitalizing the the, the industry and uh, digitalizing workflows and processes, uh, lock keeping is a little bit behind. Um, as as say, uh, the administrative burden of the navigator is growing while navigational tasks are reduced and 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 simplified in many ways so so why not simplify the administrative uh, tasks as well uh, and then again this the the paper logbook is also easy to manipulate yeah i mean you always can scribble and and and, and also hard to read sometimes not everybody has a very nice thing, uh, script and, and 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 handwriting so so i mean you also create a matter of like uniformity uh, by using the same uh, same units, same um, same phrasing, and and same standards uh, when you go digital. Then the divergence between paper and compliance, as say, it's easy to manipulate. Fragmented records, it's difficult to audit as well. Uh, you know, have to look your way through a stack of paper instead of like having smart functions, search functions, filtration functions, looking it up. Um, all of these are benefits, of course by going digital which you will not have to and not every uh, i mean relating to to my own relating everybody can relate to his own uh, background and experience uh being a third officer coming on board filling in logbooks the master is never satisfied with the way you're filling it in so so i mean having a digital process here is definitely definitely making it easier and also the familiarization will 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 be will be easier because everybody's working in the same in the same logbooks and the same uh, software. Yeah, we're not after already had smart solutions in uh, to offer in regard to uh, to to uh, assure compliance when it comes to your digital chart and publication portfolio and passage planning. We now, of course, can also uh, assure compliance for log keeping. 
Then, of course, <laughs> most of you have been seeing this and looking at this infrastructure or, or digital ecosystem uh, numerous times, and I want to go quickly through it. Uh, for, for us, it's important, of course, we have mentioned that Ingenium, we have an exclusive partnership with Ingenium, and, and which we are very proud of and very confident that Ingenium is, is having the same philosophy and ideals than, than, than NAFT or has uh, compliance made easy and, and reducing the workload. But of course, we also always take pride in, in our, our very innovative ecosystem. And, and the Ingenium logs, the green log uh, platform is actually uh, seamlessly integrating within, within our solutions. So we, we basically can install the digital logs through a nav box. And of course, also the nav box can share data with, with, the, um, with the green logs. And of course, through the nav box, which is a DNV um dmv class uh, class uh, proved uh a cyber secure environment also can be shared to the office so cyber security is not a question here it's guaranteed then the benefits of going digital um of course the logs are compliant uh we would never sell something uh, or offer something which is not compliant the operation uh, the, re the operational risk will be will be drastically reduced of course uh, for, for earlier mentioned reason, transparency and also smart alerts, giving you a notification if you actually falsify an entry or make your entry, uh, which, which is wrong um, and, and related to the technical aspects of your vessel. And then, of course, the locks come with a customized vessel configuration. So basically all tanks, pumps, uh, piping arrangements that you have on your vessel will be reflected in your logbook. I don't have to fill in an empty page. Um, which with, with non-existing or have to figure out which tanks are available when it comes to fuel transfers or, or uh, discharges. So there's no physical storage required, of course. I mean, that comes without a question. And then the warning and alerts before a violation occurs. Yeah. Transparency through digitalization, already mentioned by Berger. We think that's one of the one of the main benefits you will have by going digital and let the data work for you. Um, I mean, there's nothing smart than paper. I mean, having data, uh, we all can, we all, everybody who is working on a vessel, has worked on a vessel, knows the amount of reports we have to share with Shoreside. Basically, you fill in these reports, having a paper logbook on your lab, and the data you have been filling in to the, to the paper logbook, you have to fill in again, and one of the reports you have to sh share with Shoreside. Why not simplify the workflow and the process, and instead of filling it in in a report again, just auto-populate a report by the log entries that already have been made before. Uh, so also the log entries, when they come in a digital form, they are easier to be consumed for smart analytics and analysis than, than, than uh, paper logs. Yes, can be installed in the nav box, already mentioned during our ecosystem, and also can be audited remotely. Yes, and then of course, very interesting for you to know what are we complying with. Of course, the e-logs, they are uh, approved by uh, classification body, Lloyd's Register and Indian uh, Register. And then we have the following flag state approvals on board. And I'm also happy to share that at this very moment, we actually uh, are in dialogue with, with flag, state, um, flag state authorities to get even more approvals on board. Yes. So hereby, I uh, would like to hand over to Amitop. Uh, interesting to mention, Amitop, uh, Amitop uh, has a very interesting background. Before he decided to contribute uh, with, with uh, software solutions for the maritime industry, Amitop has actually been, been sailing as a master mariner. And Amitop also has been uh, working as a fleet manager. And when we have been looking into the digital logbook solutions, um, from my personal perspective, these were the first digital logs that I saw, okay, there's actually nautical experience and, and knowledge reflected in, in the digital solution. So um, hereby, uh, I will hand over to Amitab and uh, thank you. Right. Uh, thank you, Timo. Thank you for the introduction and uh, good morning, good afternoon to all uh, viewers. It's really nice to be online and uh, get across with our product to share information about it. And uh, 
as you uh, all of you have some uh, some of you would have been seafarers on board and worked on uh, in the offices uh, surely all of you would uh, feel that digitization is a long way coming especially when it comes to record keeping on board ships and the burden on board the ships has been pretty immense for maintaining accurate records which are auditable and uh, repetitive at times as well as a lot of the information uh, that could have been taken up by digital means is still not done and is taken in a form which is uh, probably archaic in this day and age. So uh, I'm glad Timo said the context and uh, as we go along, I would like to show to you how the a product uh, such as this can actually transform the way you are managing your ships and not only create efficiencies and uh, get, uh, cost efficiencies for your system and management uh, process, but also create that sort of uh, transformational uh, approach towards management, which can uh, really empower the seafarers, bring about a good change for the environment, as well as ensure that uh, your operations uh, continuously keep evolving and getting better. So uh, <clears throat> I, I would start with the, uh, of course, the application and run you through each screen that we have and uh, give you a context of the logs. Um, I, I guess right now you could be, you see the green logs homepage, which is the uh, uh, software uh, landing page for any uh, access from on board the ship. So the green logs is basically a log keeping solution, which is uh, used by the ship staff and crew on board and each of them would have their own login and credentials so you would have uh, your own credentials to go in and a lot of the information that is stored is actually uh, uh, captured against the individual's name and his actual designation and rank so all of the information that goes in is uh, accurate and encrypted and stored. So a lot of changes had been brought about uh, during that period uh, uh, in the run up to digital logs by uh, the IMO guidelines that came in and which have now become a part of the uh, MARPOL regulations. So just to give you a little context on logs, uh, what we have is a solution which is a unified platform across all logs and uh, there are two sections to it. Uh, the one section is the electronic record books which come under the MARPOL uh, convention and a part of the I IMO uh, uh, guidelines as well as MEPC 3122 regulation which is pertaining to of course the ORB part 1, part 2, garbage record books, cargo record books and everything related to Annex 6. So we have incorporated all those logs under the ERBs within green logs and alongside that what we've done is we've also included the deck and engine logs which will give you a full operational overview also of your ships uh, by giving you all of this in one platform. So what it has done is it has unified all the log keeping on board and what we expect uh, is that this uh, would surely be one source of all the information for all reporting on board and therefore it would be quite transformational in terms of uh, the admin burden coming down on board the ships as well as creating that level of transparency accuracy that we've talked about and at the same time giving you that scalability because you're no, no longer looking at stashing up paper logs on your ships and uh, you have a, a database which can take uh, five years or ten years of records in a small uh, USB drive so you're not looking at uh, cutting down that many trees anymore and at the same time you have data which is live and usable ashore and visible to you. So uh, the, I won't stretch my introduction any further and I'll deep dive into the software and uh, let me show you uh, how how it would be for a seafarer on board. So let, let's take the most common example and the most talked about log, which is the oil record book, part one and part two. So I'll just log out and log in as a third engineer and uh, show you what's the sort of screens he would be looking at on board and simulate an entry on, on the ship. So since uh, this is down in the engine room, I'll just get out of the uh, night theme and let it be bright as it would be in the engine room. <laughs> and um, so show you the, the landing page of a third engineer. So what we've done here is there is a lot of uh, 
uh, admin, uh, admin side setup that happens in the software, but we are not burdening you with all of that because when you are looking at a user on board, the software has got to be user friendly, simple, and it should not really take away time from the actual watch keeping duties of the staff. So we've kept it as simple as possible and only a few screens that are relevant to the role would be visible. And then in, in those screens also, we have so diverged away from the fact that uh, probably when you go in for your exams as a engineer or a deck, deck officer, you have got to remember rules and regulations and what comes under what, what section. So we've tried to isolate the user from all of those sort of uh, demands and make it more a simple uh, second nature of how they're doing their job on board. So if you're looking at maybe an entry in the machinery space and the most common one being a uh, bilge water transfer. So let me click on that and then say, I want to create a bilge water transfer. So for the user, it's all about thinking of what he's doing, then going and selecting an activity from the icon base or the list of activities that we have here. Uh, then he would pick the fields that he has been requested to enter. And all of these fields that you see here are all coming uh, directly as a manifestation of his cargo piping, what is captured in his uh, IOPP certificate, and what is actually ca uh, actual capacity particulars and tank particulars are. So in effect, what the user on board is going to see is exactly what is there on his ship and nothing uh, different and nothing uh, uh, deviant from what his ship can allow him to do. So if he has three tanks here or three sources for bilge connections, they would be here. If he has maybe multiple tanks uh, under his IOPP certificate where he can collect bilge water, only those will show here. So then once once the user has selected uh, these tanks as per the piping arrangement on board, which we have already fed in, uh, he picks the time and you know the duration of this activity, and then he can uh, pick up the uh, actual volumes that he has transferred. So if you see here, uh, there is a preview already coming up and it's giving you the code and the actual entry and a syntax view of how the entry is being created with the units, etc. And in making this entry, we have uh, kept a sort of workflow also, which could be um, customized to various company requirements where we have the duty engineer signing off as the in charge of the operation and the chief engineer signing off as the person who is overseeing it um, after the operation is done. So all of these are uh, as per the firstly, of course, as per the regulation, and these workflows could be further tweaked to suit your company requirements. So when you look at now an entry going in here, uh, the question I would ask is, so what? What's the big difference? I'm just going and punching in figures, and maybe it'll still be wrong. It could be incorrect. It could be falsified. Uh, so how is the system any better than what a paper record would be? And this is where we find that digital logs can be transformational because it will automate a lot of the checks and balances that you want within the system itself. So when I click save here, you will see that the first level of checks would happen, which is a validation check. So here, uh, the example that is shown up is that the capacity entered is exceeding the maximum capacity of this tank number 34 drain tank. So this in effect will ensure that, you know, careless mistakes or real or silly oversights would not happen in your log. And you can be rest assured that these are historic thing uh, when you compare it with uh, uh, digital log keeping so now assuming that the person is you know now realizes that he has made a mistake and he comes and corrects it and puts the entry in you'll see now <clears throat> there is a second level of filters also applied which is now a warning so a warning is uh, when we actually check what are the actual volumes in the tank there and correlate it to the amounts that are transferred and say whether they're adding up mathematically or not so and this is often the case when an audit happens or a psc boards your ship they would like to see whether your records are actually accurate and reflecting a true representation of what's happened so in this case if i would add 0 0.7 and uh, the existing rob of 0 0.73 i should be reporting a volume of 1.4 but for some reason the user is entering 0 0.75 so since ships are pretty much uh, have a lot of activities happening in uh, simultaneously, there could be some reasons for it. So we've not really restricted this entry because the user can still go ahead. But if he does go ahead with this sort of a discrepancy, he really now has to give a reason. So if his reason is 
uh, specified, then you now have a totally auditable record in your system that is specifying why you had a deviation within these figures as well. So now, now comes to the uh, now comes the other side of uh, record keeping when it's digital. Is uh, till now whatever I've done is. Uh, the user has had was thinking of making an entry. He had uh, a discrepancy, so he's overridden that, and he has now gone and put in the details. And now the the system is prompting him that look here, this is uh, now for you to confirm if you want this to go into the record because once it goes into the record, this record is actually stored in the soft in the database, and uh, the only way you can get it out is by striking it out. There is no erasing or any magic pen that is going to make this vanish. So th thereby here we ensure a complete uh, you know um, transparency in record keeping and the user also gets more conscious about how he is making his entries because he's actually watching what's happening and you know being prompted before he goes ahead with something silly so let's uh, say that i am happy with this uh, now based on the imo guidelines uh, there are various methods by which a user can sign an entry so one method is uh, you give your password uh, first at the time of logging in and second time at the time of making an entry so at this point uh, most of the flag states are asking for an uh, dual password authentication system. There are only few flags that are looking at uh, a biometric signature pen, which uh, we have integrated into the software as well, which I'll show you when I get into the admin side of the module. Um, and that basically means your signature would be stored like any bank would store your signature and your signature would be compared against that before the entry goes in. But that's not a mandatory requirement for other flags. So I'll just show you how it goes in here. So when I submit this entry in now, uh, we have these options for the biometric signature pen or just saving it with your password, which I just did. And if I go ahead and press save, it's actually going to capture my name and uh, the date and time when this entry went into the log so it's successfully in the log and if i need to view now what was the entry i can go to the view which is a tabular entry which is not the conventional form of how you would be viewing your record on on board as on date so we have the traditional view as well which will give you the entire page wise reference as to the entry going in uh, this is the first page and the second page. And as I mentioned to you, when you're making an entry in the log and it's gone in, the only way you can take it out is by striking it out. So even a strike out is valid and it'll also tell you what was the reason for it. So in this case, this is a deletion. If you were making an amendment, you would have a similar watermark over the entry stating that it struck off for an amendment and uh, therefore the entries continue. So all the workflows are, uh, are reflected in, and if you have two signatures to be done, that would be also a part of it. Likewise, when the full page is completed, only then the master can sign, and all the entries have to be signed on the page. Uh, here, I can't sign in, uh, sign off unless I have logged in as the master who's actually signed on on the vessel. So therefore, it's role, totally role-based access and role-based approvals in the system. If I want to make a report and get this uh, uh, exported you have various modes of export you can just export the metadata you can have an xml export and you can also have the uh, standard view as we have in the logs so if i were to get the the normal uh, paper view uh, this gets exported out as a pdf document which you can uh, then uh, circulate email and use as an electronic copy or uh, uh, even at the times for certain logs, you may have to print a certain record and get it endorsed and store it back. So you could use it for that. So when it comes out from the system, you have the preamble pages just like you have uh, in the system where uh, you you are uh, you have the description of all the codes. Then you have the details of the ship where it will mention all the particulars of your vessel. And then comes the list of people who are on board, who have signed on and who are active members of the crew who are actually participating in log keeping. Uh, and after that follows the actual page where you have all the entries. And this is then as just as you would have it in the paper based log keeping system. So that's a little bit about the reporting side. And uh, this same pattern is followed across all logs. Uh, if I just log out now and uh, come back in as a um, chief engineer, you'll see that uh, 
whatever has been signed by the duty engineer now will also show up as something that I can view and sign off on. So you have a screen where uh, as a quick overview, you know, okay, all of these are pending signature by the chief engineer and some of these uh, could be just taken here. And just for the for the demo purposes, I have um, um, activated my mouse. So I'll just make a random signature, which is, of course, not the correct mode of signature, but just for the purpose of making a entry, I'll let me do that. So I can straight away sign it off, give my credential password again, and this will clear out. So anyone who is logging into the system would be prompted as per his role as to what he has to sign and do. And if there is something pending further, you also have notifications. So let's say in the machinery space, if you were to be having a daily sounding to be taken or the weekly inventories are overdue, any such activities would also show up. And all alongside, uh, all of this is being actually uh, logged so that in the office, if you should find that something is out of the way, which I'll show you in some of the digitized dashboards that we have, that you can also track a lot of these events as they occur on board. So, so when you come in uh, to the log, uh, let me now just, just step out of the screen of the users and come in as the system administrator. Uh, th this is where you uh, we sort of have everything and anything which is under the log and of course the normal user on board would only see that part which is relevant to him and I just want to touch upon uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, part which is relevant to how the ship is customized so here we are actually capturing the tanks uh, and their subtypes so if you have tanks and their frame numbers the capacities all of these are captured in and made specific to the ship when you're looking at maybe the waste management plan, we can also capture the waste management plan details so that whatever collections that are happening on board are appropriate to the ship and its arrangements. Uh, when you look at the uh, equipment on board, even those are uh, <clears throat> captured with their capacities. So in effect, if you're saying you're evaporating something or you're uh, pumping some quantities, all of them would be validated against these entries here. So... <clears throat> Uh, and then when it comes to any of the regulatory requirements, we have different syntaxes for different uh, record keeping and all of these can be actually created and built within the system. Uh, coming back to the logs, so all logs uh, are of course accessible through one of the homepage uh, icons as well as on the, on the top bar that you see there. So let me just show you the um, ORB uh, part two so this is uh, for oil tankers and has a similar pattern. So if you're looking at making maybe a, uh, an entry for loading, discharging, all of these would again show in a similar tabular form. And if you have the entry made, you could sign it using the signature pen or just your saving your uh, with your password. So even complex entries such as, you know, a crude oil washing entry, etc. All of these are possible with these simple interfaces because what we've done is we try to keep it as uh, minimalistic as possible so that the user doesn't get overwhelmed. So let's say on a ship on an oil tanker, if he has four tra tank cleaning machines, this entire operation would you know, then di dictate what are the next fields that he has to enter. So what, what we have always found is without uh, uh, interaction since 2018 with the ships is that the moment you keep it simple, it's been a lot easier to take to and adapt. And we found that for in terms of uh, usage, we've just had to give a 17 minute uh, training video to our staff and they have been up and running because of the simplicity and the very strong correlation with, with the actual activity on board. So that has been one of the USPs of the product as we got going and has been a very you know heartwarming thing that people have taken to it with ease rather than normally it could be burdensome to look at any other electronic reporting system. So for, we've been fortunate in that respect. Uh, when it comes to uh, the other log such as the annex 6 log this then covers everything from ozone depleting substances and you know how you've managed these on board if you're looking at uh, fuel oil uh, socks changeovers eco changeovers all of these would also be captured in a similar way uh, this what uh, the the record keeping uh, pattern that i'm showing you here is uh, how it is done in the Panama log, but these logs and templates can actually be custom made to suit 
your company requirements or anything that your flag state would determine it till date it's only panama flag that is dictated a, a specific pattern so that's why we have this on uh, demo here uh, we also use this for uh, recording the engine parameters so wherever there's been some maintenance that affects the nox uh, emissions of your vessel you can record these here and there is this standard pattern but at the same time a different pattern could be created uh, to suit your requirement um, when it comes to the cargo record book this is also very similar to the other records because it's all loading discharging ballasting etc and then within these uh, what we've also done is you have a thing called uh, you know you may require an, a surveyor to authorize any of your entries so you could actually go and create the entry and uh, in this case you put the name of the surveyor create that full entry uh, print it and then you could come back into the system and upload it as a scanned attachment uh, to the cargo record book which would serve as a record of the endorsement so we've we've actually worked practically with all the uh, ships ship types that we have been interacting with and and these have been running for quite some time on board and a small uh, small small changes that we had to do in 2019 or so were ironed out and really internalized into the product to make it totally uh, compliant firstly and then of course totally uh, acceptable for the ship staff too uh, the recent logs that we added, uh, I mean, uh, and it's not part of MARPOL though, but a very cumbersome log is the ballast water uh, record book. And this this one has a very you know detailed sort of reporting pattern, which we found pretty interesting for our side because we can make it a lot simpler for the ships. But uh, how do we do it is we've kept the same uh, pattern of, okay, you're using a ballast water treatment system or not using it, or you're doing a, de-ballasting de to the shore reception. All these codes and everything I've captured uh, predefined as per the activity. Even for that matter, the signature now has a code which is also determined by the software based on what we have created. Uh, once you've got that in, uh, there is very little chances of you going wrong with the entry. Furthermore, all this data that is being stored now is stored in digital form and it can be actually utilized for USCG reporting or any such other reporting, which I'll show you shortly because we have a very customizable template model which can be used in any form uh, of reporting. Uh, then comes the garbage record book. This is uh, uh, similar to the storage pattern that you would have on board and it would of course integrate to you what is the percentage fill of these areas. Uh, if I were to pick a simple activity such as discharging of food waste, so you would be able to see all those uh, 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 yeah, those categories that are only relevant to that particular activity. So in this case, if you're discharging something something to see, then it's only food waste that is allowed. And if you were to key in the details and say, uh, give it a distance from land, and I say 1.5 miles, and I check off all these, uh, you would expect the system again to be your sort of conscience keeper or let's say a, a, a tool that would warn you. So for now, if you look at it, everything seems good and nice just as it would be in the log, but should I go ahead with this entry? Here's where the intelligence kicks in again because MARPOL and all the regulatory aspects have been actually uh, enshrined into the software to ensure that these prompts and alerts can come to you uh, live as you do it. And if you've really made a violation, you just go ahead, yes, and own it up and tell your staff. So that's where the immense transparency, including the, uh, the, the, you will never get hit with some something as a surprise because the log is ensuring that everything is being done correctly and put up there in a in a way. <clears throat> okay. Uh, the, so so when when you look at uh, the other logs as well, uh, uh, we have the deck and engine log, which is again giving you an overview of the entire watch. There is the engine log, which is uh, totally customized to the ship uh, make and model with all the engines and types. Everything follows exactly the same pattern. And uh, when you're looking at um, these data points that go in, there are uh, numerous uh, dashboards also that you can have live. So I'm just showing you a sample dashboard which we have created on the uh, the ERB side. And this is uh, gives you a full overview of all your log keeping. So what in effect you may spend a week scrutinizing page by page. You can see in uh, for all your ships all in one go. 
uh, at one at one shot and then uh, you could even pick and choose and you know filter quickly to see what happened okay there's an evaporation of water and there was an alert message that said that uh, you know there was a discrepancy and this is the reason was given as a test but maybe uh, i mean this is all of course uh, simulated data that i'm showing you so for you to get to a level of knowledge of what's happening on your fleet how effective are things in which period what happened is just a simple click on a few changes that you would uh, and that you can get to likewise if today i'm seeing my entire fleet i can, i can tell you where all activities have happened and if i just go and put my uh, mouse over it i know what activity was done where this is a bilge overboard and so if you're looking at some particular activity it's easy to just go and pick it up from the system or look at one ship at a time so all of this is purely uh, now made a matter of uh, you know uh, will will flag what is necessary and important to you rather than you having to sift through volumes of data so if you're setting kpis for your bilge collections or you want to see a particular period what went on all you have to do is you know select those periods if i choose a particular tank i can see the pattern for that tank what happened and then were these from weekly declarations or rob updates so you got all this uh, versatility and these dashboards we make custom built to suit your requirements because if you have a different regime of reporting or uh, process all of that can be reflected within this so this, this is a sludge collection dashboard <clears throat> then you also have for total quantity is discharged ashore if i want to see what is discharged ashore i just click i have the full details and i know it month wise i can choose a particular ship and that ship would uh, of course there's no nothing on that ship but if it has uh, a data on it you would see it likewise i can go and say how much of plastic was generated what is the e waste generated what is the amount of cooking oil so everything is a click away <clears throat> so that's where now your data will actually speak to you rather than just uh, remain as a passive or a very inactive page collecting dust so hello uh, amita yeah right sorry to interrupt uh, i see <laughs> we're running up on uh, time and uh, we could uh, go move over to the questions and answer section because I know there's a lot of questions that uh, want uh, answering. Uh, we're really lucky today to have a lot of inputs uh, from our audience. Great. So any okay. any final words mm -hmm. or should I just jump over to the questions and answer? Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, I've set the context and we are very happy to answer any question that you have. It's a very large uh, number of logs that we have here. So it may take a little time, but uh, if you have the patience, we'll run you through the whole thing. Yeah, right. Thanks. So thank you, Amitabh, and thank you, Timo, for your presentations. A lot of information, and uh, uh, it has triggered a lot of good questions. I've been paying attention in, on the questions tab. So. Uh, we will bring the questions up in full screen when they are been, have been posted in the questions tab. Uh, so we can look at them together and answer them. Timo and Amitab can answer them as they uh, come in. So, um, and all questions, just to mention that, all questions that we don't answer in the chat window or for some other reason, we will pick them up and answer them directly through our sales uh, team or uh, Timo and Amitab will contact you per email. So over to uh, the questions tab, we have a question from Lin Hu, who asks how to correct digital logbooks if any wrong entry is made. So I think uh, Amitabh, do you want to take this or Timo? Timo wants to take this. Hi Lin, uh, yeah, I think Amitabh has covered this during his uh, demonstration of the platform and uh, uh, for a wrong entry will be appear as a strike through and, and appear with a stamp uh, to justify the correction and, and a new correction can be made afterwards. So. Thank you. Um, then we have a question from Matthias Peterson. If we have many people in different places, do we need different logins? Who wants to take this one? Timo, will you answer? Oh. Yeah, I mean, like there's a login, there's a unique login for every different role on board 
and and of course uh, the the chief officer will not be not be able and not be uh, accessing any engine related logs and 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 vice versa so so yeah log keeping can be done uh, different logs can be maintained uh, simultaneously by by different different tasks and different crew members on board. So everybody has a unique login, uh, a password, uh, also to validate and verify uh, or validate the the entries made, and 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 has their own. Uh, so so the, yes. Thank you. And then we have a question from Per Christian Larsen. Uh, he's asking, do you have a list of flags approving digital logbooks? Amitab, would you uh, handle this one? Right. Uh, to answer that question, uh, each flag has their own uh, circulars, and some of them have not come out with them, and some of them are already out with them. So uh, we have contacted most flags, and we have listed all the flags that we have been in touch with. Uh, to give you a definitive list is not possible because uh, each flag uh, has, by virtue of uh, the MARPOL convention now allowing uh, electronic record books has to allow it. And uh, most of them have done this. So when it comes to the approval uh, of logs, either the flag state would go to the RO to get the uh, approval done through them based on the type approval certificate that the software has, or they would do it directly on their own. So a definitive list is something, I mean, we can share from the interaction that we've had, but as such, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it's the I would say uh, most of the flags are accepting now. Uh, thank you. So we have a regular guest. Katja Kleberger has a question. Uh, she asks, good morning. Are Messos <coughs> Ingenium also in contact with Portugal flag for approval from their side as well? In case of yes, when do you expect the approval to be given? Many thanks and best regards. Good to hear from you, Katja. <laughs> right uh thanks yeah I mean, in fact we had a call with them uh, a week back and uh, they've been just in in the stage of formulating their uh, guidelines and they were very happy with the demo and uh, they said they would get back to me maybe in a couple of weeks so you know, i expect to see their circular come out uh, basis what they viewed with us and uh, have also reviewed in terms of certification uh, for acceptance thank you Thank you, Amitab. Uh, and the next question is from Odd Oestein, and he asks a good question. Does the system require an internet connection? Timo wants to take this. Yeah, hi, uh, hi Odd Oestein. Um, well, I mean, it is, it is a web application, but, but it works offline. Um, synchronization, however, will, 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 uh, will be done once internet is accessible again, then it will synchronize with shore. But the logs can be used offline, log entries can be made offline, and storage can also be done offline. So, so it is, yeah. Thank you. Uh, then there's a question from Lars Petter Wevheim, and he asks, can we make ta additional logs reports, or tailor make additional logs ourselves if we adopt your software? Who wants to take this one? Come it up. Yeah, thanks. Uh, if you can share my screen also, I'd just like to give a brief demo because we didn't get to that. Uh, to answer your question, yes, 200% uh, correct. We can customize any log, any sort of reporting requirement. Uh, if you just see my screen, we have this system of making templates. So we have uh, templates for various activities and a template which would consolidate to make a complete log. So to just give you a quick overview, uh, when you look at these logs, and I'm showing you the deck log now, which is made on the Norwegian log template. So here I would have a template which would be specific to the log. So if I'm picking the Norwegian log and I say generate this uh, uh, report, you're getting exactly the template that is used on the Norwegian ships that you're uh, probably if you are you if you are using them are used to, and all the reports and data would come exactly in that same manner and would of course also be accessible in a digitized form in the office, plus you would get your PDF reports too for the log. So just to show you how it looks is it'll look totally um, identical and that's where we feel having a completely seamless solution for the ships is very good because they don't feel the difference because they're having the same sort of log keeping solution and all these entries that would go in also would be validated and checked uh, for maybe errors and ranges etc yeah sorry i went into a little more detailed answer but 
I think it re required that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so much knowledge to share. It's uh, <laughs> it's difficult to to move along here. Uh, we have a question from Ranish Ravendran. Uh, he asked, I'll bring it up. Is flag specific log formats available? For example, NIS flag deck or engine logbooks format is different from a Panama flag format. Yeah, let me take that again. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, I just demonstrated the uh, Norwegian flag. We have the engine log as well. And uh, that again has the uh, NIS format. And we have two formats here. One is these, the, it's a concise one, and the other one is a more detailed one. So I can show you this one, which is, uh, <clears throat> which will give you an idea. We have the, which has running hours and other details, which uh, are in the, the, let me say the abridged version of the Norwegian log. And the more detailed one is also uh, uh, there in our system. It is got uh, all the parameters that you would have. So this is, this is the, but I think I'm not sure which one is it. I keep getting confused between NIS and the Norwegian one, but it has the details of the auxiliary engines, then the you know pressures, temperatures, and uh, remarks, etc. So yeah, to answer your question, yes, and we can make any log because we have the template customization tool within the software. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Amitab. Uh, next question is from Christian. I'll just bring it up. Christian Stav set. He asks the task, the tanks and vessel details. Do we just send the tank plan and IOPP certificate, and you add it in the software? Timo wants to take this over to you, Timo. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> since since we're relatively new with this product, so so when it comes to to uh, going the transition from paper to to uh, digital. Uh, of course, and that's one of the f biggest, biggest benefits of going digital, that the actual vessel configuration will be reflected in your digital log. And once you uh, want to convert from paper to digital, we have an onboarding process and we will send over a list uh, which has to be filled in accordingly. Uh, it's a standard list which with information we require to to customize the log to your vessel. So, so yes, basically the... Um, the, the two items you have been highlighting, yes, that's that's one of the requirements in, in addition to, to other vessel particulars that we need to customize your logs, yeah. Thank you, Timo. Uh, now we have a question from Torbjörn Lussan, and he asked an uh, interesting question. Is there any integration with sensor data to have pre-populated fields where, po where possible? Timo wants to take this over to you, Timo, again. So yes, uh, <laughs> the locks are not only flexible from 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 a content perspective. Uh, so so not only the templates and 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 the reports can be can be uh, customized and modified, but but if it is feasible uh, to to have sensor inputs, um, we of course have to see how the interfaces look like and and if if data can be shared and 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 coming through the interfaces and can be connected to out populate and utilize data within the logs so yes it's rather flexible uh, yes thank you timo uh, so we have a question from lars petal he is asking i'll bring it up have you developed a solution for noon reports eu mrv reports and environmental reports bunkering and cargo operation reports etc Amitabh, do you want to take this? Uh, right. Um, to Excuse answer me. this, yeah. Right, thanks. Uh, to answer this, uh, yes, we have a system where we can generate any uh, set of reports based on the company's requirements. And uh, th there is uh, there is integration with uh, the um, uh, performance system also within the, the nav box, which can give you the EU MRV and other reports that you desire. So the thing is, uh, this, these are all would be APIs that can be consumed within our software with other products within the ecosystem, as well as there would be direct reports which would have to be customized and created. So to answer your question, yes, we have. Yeah. Thank you. I'm it up. Uh, then we have a question from uh, Mikal. Uh, he asks, is all data or logs kept server side or is data doubled up on local computers? Yeah, uh, let me take that. All right. 
Yeah, so uh, the data uh, is governed by the uh, IMO guidelines and the MEPC 31274 requirements. So you got to have the system locally in a database on board. And that data then is backed up into a separate network access drive or a separate drive itself so that you can restore from it completely. As a secondary means, we also have a synchronization to the office. So when the data comes to the office, you could recover the data from there as well. So we have all methods uh, that are there for disaster recovery and of course we comply with the basic requirement that you got to have a backup created at every transaction and available on board in a separate uh, system which is not a part of the parent system thank you thank you it's <clears throat> up now we have a solid question from Katya again hello are there any customers already whose VSLs are visiting ports with authorities known for troublesome behavior when it comes to documentation, such as Nigeria, Cameroon, Ukraine. In case there are such customers, what is their feedback? And are they purely relying on the digital records or do they make double administration and keep paper records for those ports? Many thanks from Katya. Amit wants to... I can only answer that from the practical experience that we have with the logs because uh, we are running over 90 ships now who are actually presenting the oil record book in digital form in various ports. And they have been calling ports in uh, East Africa, US, uh, and East Coast, um, Japan and the Far East as well. So, so far we've had a few remarks from vettings which have asked us to include some validations which we have done. And uh, till date, uh, there has been no objection to the oil record book in digital form, uh, because uh, as you know, when you start using the log uh, as a primary means of log keeping, you've got to have a declaration of MAPOL electronic record book given by a flag state. And that has to be accepted by every, uh, uh, third party inspector coming on board such as PSCs, vettings, etc. So that's been our experience so far. Uh, of course, um, there may be cases where uh, there could be variant behavior from different flag states, but till date we are not aware of it in the two years that we've been running so far. Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you, Amitabh. Uh, now there's a question from Ann Till. She asks a little bit about flag states also is there a plan for gmdss logbook flag states official logbooks a logbook solution can only work for us if all our statutory statutory logbooks can be provided on the one platform on your here you go okay so uh, we've interacted with various flag states and uh, including i mean the latest one that i had was with uh, bahamas and portugal flag so they are keen on uh, digitizing a lot more of the logs and uh, so we have basically a scalable platform because of the templatization which is possible and we don't need to make a software change when we create a new log so if you tell me you have a gmdss log which needs to be included under uh, the tech side of the operation. So what we've done is now we have created a sort of hierarchy. You have the deck and engine. Under the deck and engine, there could be various logs required. And some of these logs could be flag state approval logs, or these could be totally your SMS driven logs that you would like to keep. So the template is the one that answers and creates those uh, 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 what do you call reports in the system. And then um, if there is a requirement from the flag state to validate it, then we engage directly with the flag state to get them validated and approved. So that's how we were addressing it. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you again, Amitabh. Uh, there's another question from Ann uh, Till again. She asks if uh, can on non-applicable logs not show up on the green logs homepage? No, probably I didn't articulate myself clearly at the beginning, but uh, it's all the logs that are visible are as per the uh, user credentials and his role. So there are different roles on the ship. So if you are an in charge uh, of a, a engineering watch, you would only see the relevant logs. Uh, then furthermore, if you're not buying all those other logs, then only those logs that would be uh, uh, bought are available and on display. So in effect, it's customizable. You define a role and you say, this person should see this, we create it, and you're, you, he will only see those logs. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm trying to go through the questions and, and determine which ones we've covered uh, before, this, because there's some, a lot of people are asking more of the same, uh, or pretty much the same question. But Anne has another question that asks about simultaneously 
accessing uh, the writing uh, inputs. Amitabh, will you take this one yeah. after? I okay, can read right. it. Let, let me take it, yeah. yeah. Okay, so here, I mean, this is a new question and uh, I mean, um, we haven't experienced uh, show-based crew uh, control and you know log keeping on board because when we're talking about log keeping we're talking about log keeping on board the vessel and it's been done by a person who's in charge who's signed on the vessel and is part of the crew etc so i think uh, i would have to research more and know more about what what your uh, requirement is here because uh, this log keeping solution is for entries created on board the ship the office can view what is happening and uh, the responsibility for the entire log keeping remains for the people on board uh, as such. Uh, sorry, I can't give you a more uh, detailed answer unless I answer your question and un understand your question a little better. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Amitabh. Now we're running uh, up on the scheduled time for our webinar regarding questions, but uh, there's so much interesting questions that are coming in that uh, we want to continue to answer questions as they come in. And remember, if you're short on time, you can always log in and see the recording of this webinar uh, later on, as long as you've signed up on the invitational links. So I'll just uh, look at another question from Dag Finbø, and I bring it up and read it. Uh, can green logs import crew lists from another systems like OCS? Who wants to uh, take this one? Come it up. Yeah, uh, we've uh, when I, when I show up the architecture drawing uh, in a more detailed presentation, we have various uh, APIs that we can consume and also push information to, but that will require to be talked about on a case-to-case -case basis because if your software is releasing certain information and that information can be consumed, we can do that, and that also goes to the um, IoT-related sensors. If we are getting data in sensors, we can also consume that in various engine parameter logs, etc. So it that level of customization is possible, but has to be discussed. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Amitabh. Uh, and remember, you can always schedule demos uh, for digital logbooks. Uh, just uh, reach out to our uh, customer service and we'll, uh, we'll help you set up demos. Uh, I have another question from Adrian Kellogg. How to present records from OOB to PSA? in e-versions or do records have to be printed out did you face any problems in west african but it's west african but amitab it's somewhat a repetition of the previous question but uh, but there is one point which is interesting uh, which i'd like to mention here uh, it depends upon your flag state uh, some flags would say that uh, okay you can sign off everything and digitally store it in the log but you still got to print it out and sign it as a true copy and maintain it and present it to others so um, till date uh, there are a few flags that say it and other flags are going totally digital uh, if you're looking at the uh, the uk uh, red and sign they go with a digital signature and a totally digital presentation whereas other logs other flags may have a hybrid version for presentation so you'll have to look at it case to case thank you <clears throat> thank you and uh, now there's an interesting question i just have to find it from john he asks can the digital logbooks be installed remotely on the entire fleet if we already have the dnv approved now box Timo wants to take this. Hi, John. Yeah, yeah, this is absolutely no problem. And, and, and what I highlighted earlier, this is one of the biggest benefits we have. If you already have a nav box on board, you have the cyber secure environment and we simply can push the installation package through the nav box to your fleet, to the vessels, and, and also uh, activate the, the service and also push the templates. So, so yes, all of this is possible uh, if you have the nav box on board. However, the system is rather flexible. You don't require a nav box, but it's always highly recommended to have the nav box on board also for data feeds because the nav box is also connected to, to the uh, to, uh, to, to interfaces, which of course can be uh, accessed by the log books as well. So yes. Thank you very much. Uh, now there's a question from Tomoki. Uh, he asked, I think that e-logbooks related MARPOL must comply MEPC 
312 slash 74. So vessels should obtain declaration from flags or classes. How is the process to get approval to use EDEX, EDEX logbooks on board? Right. I mean, uh, now when you say um, just uh, it's the electronic record books, so ERB. So that one is, of course, obtained from the uh, flag state. And normally uh, it depends upon how the flag state is uh, equipped. So when you're looking at the bigger flags, such as Marshall Islands, Panama, Liberia flag, they do it on their own. Whereas the other flags that do not have the machinery in place for it, they'll delegate it to DNV, Lloyd's or some other uh, RO. And that RO then would uh, verify by virtue of your type approval and by virtue of the setup, what the arrangement on board is. Once they're happy with that and they see the declaration from the software provider, they issue the declaration of MAPOL electronic record book. When it comes to deck e-log, that's a separate topic because uh, this could be similar to what your company is doing in a deck log or maybe it may require a special approval from uh, the flag state till date we are uh, seeking approvals uh, i mean we, we have had logs which we have created now which require uh, flag approval and those have been uh, the cyprus flag as well as the norwegian flag which, because they have a specific requirement which needs to be complied with so i would need to know about your flag before i answer that in more detail right thanks <clears throat> thank you again amitab uh now there's a question from Lars Petter. He asked, will you provide the web API for the logs so that the data can be used further in business intelligence systems? So who wants to answer this one? Timo, over to you. I think both Omitov and me had something to add here. Uh, <laughs> but um, of course, uh, later on, we'll, this will integrate with the um, with with Navfleet or Navfleet solution, and, and uh, as we have demonstrated during the um, during the demo briefly, we also have like innovative dashboards showing the data, uh, which which is also just as flexible as the logbook solution as well. Um, whether we export it to APIs, uh, Amitab, do you have something to add here? That's perfect. Yeah, we could uh, APIs can be exposed, and uh, depends upon what reports you require. But there is. Uh, um, I mean, a little work required there because not all the data will be available right off from the system because it's all encrypted and stored as per the regulatory requirements. So we got to decrypt it and create a reporting database and then the APIs can be shared. Yeah. Thank you both. So I'll just uh, look through the question because there was a lot coming in. So I just want to see that we're not uh, doubling up on, on repetitive um, questions. Um, but we do have one uh, from Anne Till, that's uh, a long one. Also, do you have any plans to develop simple ancillary logbooks such as complaint record book, DP logbook, ship security logbook, medical register, compass deviation logbook for operators such as ourselves that cannot use any physical logbook due to multiple locations of vessels, control and command in one voyage? Every logbook needs to be digital. Timo wants to answer this one. So over to you, Timo. I completely agree with uh, Anne's philosophy that everything has to be digital. So so yes on that. Uh, what Amitabh mentioned earlier, um, of course, like uh, these these are relatively simple logs, and 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 of course, the most logical place to subcategorize them would be under the DAG log, uh, or one of the existing logs, since they're minor logs, which are. Uh, some, some, even some flag says or some, uh, some uh, flag state authorities they have the GMD as a logbook, for example, as part of the deck log already as a standard. So, so it's, it's rather flexible. But the logs you're talking about are, are very, um, very basic, very plain, and of course can be part uh, as an extension of one of the existing logs. Yes. Thank you, Timo. Uh, now there's a question from. Franz Trugve and he's asking the US Coast Guard has previously stated that they will not accept digital ORBs. So do you have an US CG approval for the OB? And Amitab wants to take this over to you. Yeah, I mean uh, this is an old thing that was uh, mentioned uh, before October 2020. And uh, we for uh, our ships have been calling uh, US ports and the log has been demonstrated. And there is a circular also out uh, which talks about US Coast Guard accepting law, uh, oil record books in electronic form. So I think that this was something there which was raised, which is a very valid point you mentioned, but it's been overcome and 
that barrier was crossed some time back uh, before. Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Uh, there's a question now, I'll just have to see, from Sophia. And bring it up and she asks, is it possible to transfer the information to office and can it be done automatically? Does it need to be confirmed from the vessel same way as the passage plans? Timo wants to take this one and over to you. Uh, no, you only have to synchronize. So there's different different ways of synchronizing. So you have offline uh, offline synchronization. You have the synchronization by email. Uh, you have various synchronization based on 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 yeah, the technicalities of your vessel. So uh, it's a different different process than the approval uh, which we have for the nav station passage plans. Um, Amitab, can you highlight further on the on the methods? Yeah, I mean uh, the the th the thing is uh, it'll synchronize, and uh, if you're asking about a you know a workflow for validation of certain things from the office, uh, so at log keeping and the entire responsibility for the log is on the ship, so, so they are creating it, they are signing them off. Uh, when we look at maybe more nuanced logs, such as uh, some things on consumptions, etc., we can provide that sort of a feature as a workflow. But as on date, it's pure log keeping and you know responsibility, and everything is on the ship, and you can synchronize it automatically, and you will be able to view it in the office. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> Thank you both. Uh, then we have another question from Franz Trigve. He asks, what about position entries, i.e. range and bearing from radar and another on a, another position fix? Can this be, this be automatically transferred to the logbook? Mm, should I take that? Yeah, all right. Yeah, it, so it all depends upon what NMEA feeds and interfaces you have on board. Uh, when we are capturing this data in the logs, uh, we can capture from sensor details. So, but then it depends from equipment to equipment. We were recently having a call about uh, a Furuno system being connected and how would that connect. So that uh, as a product, this product can interface with other systems, but then it has to be worked out on a case to case basis. And as, as a standalone product, it can do the record keeping as such with bearings, ranges, etc., by user entry. And since it's a log that requires a human to sign off on it, we what we're doing is when we pull in data from sensors, we're actually using it only for validation. So there could be erroneous sensor inputs, etc. So we are not pre-populating logs completely, especially for the oil record book and that side automatically. But when it comes to the operational logs, such as the deck and engine logs, we could do it. And of course, that would have to be a discussion. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I'll just uh, have a look over in the chat and take a few questions from there. <clears throat> we have a one question, one question from Bjorn Hasle. Uh, I can't bring it up on screen, but I'll read it out loud so you can hear it. Um, he asked, can the logs be fit for purpose pending type of vessels, like SPS vessels servicing and the oil and gas industry? Um, it helped. Yeah, uh, very much so, because when you're looking at the operational logs, uh, I didn't get a chance to show you, but uh, we can do it over a more detailed call. Uh, everything from the main engine, the number of units, if you're using LNG as a fuel, if you're having a turbo alternator, may, wh whatever it may be, can be created, and then uh, the, the ship is only going to do those records. So it's totally customizable, but uh, it requires that uh, exchange of information for us to create it in that manner. Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, I will take uh, one more from the chat. Uh, I'm getting from Evstatios. He asks, from where from where does the officer's deck or engine logs? No, from where can the officer's deck or engineers can be logged into in order to update the logs? So he's asking, where can you be logged in in order to, uh, to uh, it's, it's pretty much uh, more of the question of positioning uh, around the ship is what I'm asking. So the thing is, uh, uh, the the software is installed on the server or Navbox and Navbox is on the network and every network computer can connect. And any uh, so a person accessing the it's a it's a web-based uh, software, so they just have to access the internet browser on board, and then access the log and enter. So um, at some point, uh, if 
if they're using let's say a wi-fi system and also using a browser-based approach so they can also enter details into the log using a mobile tablet but that would depend upon the connectivity to the server so that's the primary um, requirement for having to be able to enter anything in the logs thanks thank you so much uh, i will take one uh, another question from katya in the questions tab uh, she asked about future plans here hello is the ingenium software plan to be fully integrated into NavStation during one of the next software updates or will it remain a standalone software that needs special attention from the fleet itd of course work is increasing with each standalone software many thanks timo wants to answer this over to you timo uh hi gotcha uh <laughs> Thank you for your engagement. And uh, I guess I should also cover directly the other question, which I have, I've seen in, in the chat. So, so yes, there is a plan to integrate the Ingenium and Greenlog solution into our now station platform. Um, we don't have an estimate uh, yet on when that's going to be, but that's definitely the plan. And, and your question regarding uh, are environmental regulations available? Yes, we have it available in NavStation. So naturally, everything that we have available in NavStation should be and can be consumed as well by, by digital logs, talking about magnetic variation and, and environmental regulations. If you have the subscription service in NavStation, once we have the logbooks integrated, naturally, this can be consumed by the logs as well. So it's even adding value as well. So yes, this is definitely something we're looking into and have on our agenda. Thank you, Timo. And then there's a question from Andreas Mirvol. He said, says, thanks, thanks for a nice presentation. Does the system offer data sharing and integration to other systems via API or similar? And, uh, yes, we do. But of course, uh, what data, what, what is required would have to be discussed in that. Thanks. Thank you. And there's another question from Katya, and she asks about the digital gangway record book. Is it planned as well? And information from that record is used from time to time to cross check labor time built by attending service companies and class surveyors. So it would be handy to have access to this information from office side without need to ask crew to look this up. Mm, yeah, let me answer that. Um, right. Yeah. So, so we can create any log, uh, like I mentioned, using our template system. And one point that I didn't get a chance to show was when we are entering general remarks, we have a tagging system as well. So in that tag, it could be a standby engines, it could be gangway down, it could be commenced, uh, you know, discharging, loading, etc. So that would automatically populate as a report and as a statement of fact. So if that's what you're looking for, we have a provision for it. We haven't operationalized that part because we need to create a little more data to get that going. But um, yeah, it is possible and it is intended to work in that manner like you suggested. Thanks. Thank you very much. So I'll just uh, go up through the list a little bit and uh, have a question directly about all record books. He says, as Christian Stavset says, as a master, I want to close the page before I disembark. This means that page is not full completed. In paper format, this is done by adding a diagonal line. So uh, he, Amitabh wants to take this. Over to you. So uh, the, the workflow is uh, pretty clear that, you know, in our system that you need to sign off on entries for a completed page or a partial page. So when you say you're signing off, uh, I assume either you're signing off for the full page or maybe it could be a partial page because you're signing off midway uh, within that page. So the system would capture your signature below that last entry. And in the actual logs, you would be able to see the entire you know, uh, set of uh, entries in the pages that you have the, been the one who has signed off on. So it's captured in a way that will ensure that you're the one who's signing off only for the entries that you have done. You don't have to make a line like you do in the paper logs because it's already digitally capturing all that information relevant. And I see, I think there was one more question on this regard from someone else. So I guess it answers that as well, which is, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, uh, back to you, uh, uh, Bjorn. Thank you, Amitabh. Um, so I can just have a look in the list. Um, he just, I 
can take, for example, this one um, from Ranish. Understand this is approved by LR. What about DNV or class NK? Is this under process? Uh, let me answer that. Yeah. Uh, see, the this is uh, when you talk about uh, approval, you require a class approval. Uh, sorry, a type approval, and that type approval has to be by a classification body. So, uh, if it's LR, uh, these are accepted across all flags. So, there's no reason for us to duplicate uh, uh, classification body approval unless it is. Uh, necessary for some specific reason in the regulation, but as such, a DNV approval or an LR approval uh, would is one and the same because they are approving you against the MEPC 31274 standard and the IMO guidelines and the overall uh, ERB guidelines that are there, as well as any of the ISO guidelines present. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'll just have a look again. Um, I can take the one from Christian Stavset again. He's asking about the tanks and vessel details. Do we just send the tank plan and IOPP certificate and you add it in the software? Mm, I just take yeah. the Timo oh, to see. take this. Is that okay? Over yeah, I Timo. think we already we already uh, we already covered that. Uh, I think this is a rep that yeah. repetitive question and and yes, indeed, the, the the blogs will be customized to your vessel. We have a procedure for that in place. So, so uh, any vessel that you want to digitalize, uh, we will require um, the vessel particulars, which has to be filled in in, in a standard form that we deliver, and based on that form, we we customize uh, we customize the log to your vessel. Thank you. I will have a look. Uh, and there's the one question from a named that wants to ask: Can we attach photo and scan the documents in the log? It, it, it depends upon the activity. So let's say if you're looking at attaching a BDN, we have a provision for attaching a BDN. When you're looking at attaching endorsements, you can attach uh, files there. Uh, so for us, uh, we've even included, uh, if your, let's say, oil content meter fails and you want to attach a service report, you could attach that there. And that allows a PDF or an image to be put in. So depends upon what activity you're looking at and where you want to add it. Those are customizable fields and can be included as and when required. Thanks. Thank you. Um, we'll have a look in both the chat and the questions because we have had a lot of questions. Appreciate it uh, so much. Uh, I know we're running over time, but uh, those who are still with us uh, are getting a uh, a lot from from the questions and answers. Um, I'll just see here. We can take so. Um, this, I think you covered it a little bit about uh, at what point does the gate data get locked until when is it editable and what about audit trail date and time. So that's about signatures and. Uh, Right. Yeah. Uh, let me answer that. Uh, so, so the moment uh, till the time you're in, it, it is different for different logs. So if you're looking at the ERB side, which is the environment and the MARPOL related logs, uh, the moment you create a draft entry or so it is stored in the log and that then uh, has to be struck off if you have to remove it. So there's nothing, no such thing as a deletion. But till the time you don't press save and you say confirm, uh, nothing is in the log, but the moment you uh, cross that bridge, the data is in the log. When you look at the um, deck and engine log, these are more versatile logs, so <clears throat> you can edit, change, or um, uh, make uh, these corrections um, several times until they're signed. Once they're signed, then there would be a strike off which is applicable. So it's like um, it's it's enforced in a little different manner for the deck and engine logs. And uh, when it comes to um, any amendment and delete de deletion, uh, you could, as long as in the deck and engine log they're not signed, you could do that as many number of times. But if you go back uh, and backdate something, then it'll be again striking off that entry and marking it as a backdated entry. So those are all uh, there are there are workflows for this, so that the auditability of the record is preserved when it goes in. Thanks. Thank you, Amitabh.
Uh, we'll have a few more questions uh, before we round up the webinar, but uh, there's a lot coming in and all the questions that have been posted, but you, you haven't had an answer if there was some variation to the to repetitive questions earlier, but uh, there's a difference. Uh, all questions will be answered uh, directly from our team also. So we have one uh, more question also here from uh, unnamed that asks about offline uh, or the office uh, connections if they do need application to install there or if it's web-based. Web-based, uh, all you require is a, uh, I mean, browser and you get into the cloud for viewing the data on the, on the in the office. Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you so much. I will have a look also in the chat to make sure if there's anyone that has posted questions now lately. Exciting to see so many people logging in from all over the world and uh, asking. Um, uh, so just repeating myself, but you, it's possible to uh, order a demo uh, and connect with us so we, you can have the full uh, presentation on the digital logbooks from our team uh, and we will be happy to uh, to serve you so i have uh... okay oleg asks if green logs shall be connected to the ship's lan local area network because different logs shall be accessed from different stations our network settings could be made remotely he's asking if it's if it could be set up on the network rem remotely for uh, yeah so for every every installation that we've done has been done remotely uh, from pushing it to the nav box remotely or setting it up directly on the server via uh, team viewer connection and of course uh, for the internal it systems you will have to uh, provide some sort of uh, i think the what I'm, I'm not the IT guy, but there are some uh, firewall settings, etc., that need to be cleared. But once it's on the browser and uh, basically the software runs on the server, any of the computers on board would be connecting to the server for various other applications. So the same policies would apply to them. So you don't need to do much uh, as such. Once the server is installed and up and running and the LAN is uh, accessible to the crew, uh, and the server is accessible through the LAN, uh, your job is done and it gets going. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for so much information, uh, Amitabh. Uh, very interesting to, to hear. Um, I have a comment about contingency, like the aspect of contingency with the digital logs compared to the, the paper logs. Could you talk a little <clears> bit <throat> about that? Uh, yeah let me do that okay so when you're uh, changing to digital logs uh, there are a couple of things that have to be kept in mind one is you got to have a change in your sms which says that okay you're going digital and you have a certain policy for disaster recovery um, so at the software level uh, there is we have of course compliant with the imo guidelines and we have to have certain measures for contingency and those are uh, firstly uh, either you have to be installed on a type approved hardware, which is uh, resilient in nature, or you have to go to have a redundancy in place, which ensures that um, anytime this system goes down, you can just switch over and get going there. So these are uh, things that we do as a setup and some companies may have a mirror server running. So all those have to be documented and talked about during the time of the installation. Once uh, that is done for, as a um, disaster recovery, all you have to do is pick up the backup uh, database and restore it on that uh, contingency computer and you're up and running uh, again so uh, this is these are the methods and of course it has to be again discussed as per your it systems in place thanks i have a comment or a, a, a connecting questions to that uh, and there's a question about how much data storage is re required for the software uh, what are maintenance requirements uh, and how to back up the file so it's connected to the question you you just mm -hmm. talked about and how how yeah. feasible is it feasible software to do it itself to reduce human inter interaction mm, okay i didn't uh, exactly follow the last part but uh, we've looked at uh, maybe a year of uh, oil record book part one data is amounting to about 75 mb of data 
And if you're looking at all logs, maybe each uh, log could generate about, um, let's say, 100, 100 MB of data in a year. So if it's eight logs, maybe 800 MB was what I would say. It also depends upon what sort of data you're going to be storing in and attachments, etc. There is a limitation that we put that you're not allowed to put very large attachments in. But all in all, um, I think um, we've not had a challenge with data size because uh, Presently, all the servers have adequate space, and we stipulate the minimum uh, free uh, data space on the hard disk that is required as a part of the installation. Um, then when it comes to automated rep records, uh, if I understand your question correctly, and if there is, let's say, sensor data coming in every six seconds or 10 seconds, then we sort of keep it in a buffer table, and that buffer table is purged every uh, duration that we set. So maybe if I'm collecting GPS positions, every 90 days I'll purge that information, and that information is stored only for the purpose of validating an entry. So let's say there is a latitude, longitude being entered. I will compare the latitude, longitude with the data coming from the GPS for the same timestamp. After that is over, then we purge it and we don't retain it. On board. So that's how we manage data. I hope that answers your question. Great. Thank, mm -hmm. thank you. So uh, that's been a lot of good questions, and there's still uh, a lot more to uh, to expand on digital logbooks, as you understand. Uh, thank you to Amitabh and Timo for your great presentations, and I hope uh, this webinar has been enlightening to see how digital logs can be helpful for your workflow and, and improve uh, the workload uh, on board. Um, so. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And as I said before, all the questions that have been posted will be answered uh, from our team. And I hope to see you on our next webinar, which will be announced uh, date and theme. So uh, stay tuned uh, for our uh, invitational email about what the next webinar will be. So from Navtor uh, offices, I will just say thank you to everyone has, who has stayed with us. Uh, there's a lot of uh, known and unknown faces, and uh, we will happy, be happy to see you in the next one. So thank you so much, and uh, goodbye. <laughs>